Hi there. I was going to start this video by asking you, can you guess what this is? Well, if you're a woodworker, and you probably are if you're watching my videos, I'm sure you can guess what this is. And if you're not a woodworker, the title of the video might have given it away just a little bit. It's a wooden hinge. Now you can cut these individual pieces for the hinge with a scroll saw, a bandsaw with a real small blade, maybe a fret saw. I happen to have a CNC router that made it very easy. I was able to design this in easel, the software that comes with the machine, and cut them out. That makes them all identical, a lot less standing and working, but you can do it with other means. Now let's take a look at the process I use to make these. I've got one oak and one cherry. Let's take a look at how these are done. The first step is to draw the shape I want to carve in Inkscape. This is a free drawing program and very powerful. There's a bit of a learning curve, but that's true of all software. After saving the image as an SVG file, which Easel will recognize, I imported it into Easel, duplicated it to get four of the images, rotated and moved them to get the most efficient use of my wood, and got ready to carve it. I'm sure that at some point I'll be able to walk away from this CNC rotor and let it do its job, but at the moment I still find it fascinating. It's almost more of a toy than a tool, so I can stand for a long time just watching it work instead of multitasking, walking away and doing something else. My intention was to have the holes for the dowels cut through completely, but have the pieces themselves not quite cut through. As you can see, one of them was just slightly too deep. I put masking tape over the pieces so that they would not be pulled out, then flipped them over, sent them through the drum sander to free them. In the end of the dowel that holds the pieces for my hinge, I've drilled that 1 8 inch hole. Now I want to bring the end of this piece of walnut down to 1 8 of an inch to fit that. I'm using walnut just because I want a contrasting wood at the end. It'll contrast with this oak nicely, I believe. So I've marked 1 half inch from the end. I'm going to use a skew chisel with a peeling cut to bring that down to an eighth of an inch. And then I'm going to make a button from there about a quarter of an inch in this direction and turn that down to 9 16 of an inch to match the diameter on the hinge piece right in here. And that's the step I'm going to take now. With my calipers locked at 9 64 of an inch, I'll be able to use this to check as I get down close to 1 8 of an inch then I'll pull the tailstock out of the way so I have access to bring it down to that one eighth of an inch. And I'm just a hair over the 9 64 so I'm now going to pull this out of the way and bring that down to 1 8 of an inch until it matches 
the end of the dowel. And it matches the hole so precisely that I think I'll take a little bit more off. I want to have room in there for the glue so it doesn't just bind. Yeah, now I should have enough room to slide that on with glue. At this point I want to come over about a quarter of an inch. And that's how thick I want this button to be on the end. Now I have the calipers locked at 37 64 of an inch. Just 1 64 over the 9 16 that I want to bring this down to. So I can use that again. Now I'm going to turn this down. I'm going to mark the line with my skew chisel and then I think I will use my spindle gouge to turn this. I kept it under my breath, but a little bad word was said there. Just going to reposition this and start again. Well, it's about as close as I'm going to get it. And it's still big enough here that I have more to take off. So let's see if I can do this again without screwing it up one more time. See how close we're getting. That's pretty darn good. If I do a little sanding on there, probably be fine. Just take another hair off. Started sanding at 280 grit, went to 320 and 400. I'm going to stop there. Now to part this off, I'm going to use my skew chisel. Trying to do this and keep my hand out of the way of the camera is a bit of a challenge. Now with a little bit of sanding, I should be able to have this finished. To finish sanding this, I put it in my Jacobs chuck. I'll turn it with that and I'm going to sand gently. Remember that's only a 1 8 inch stem that's on there. I'm going to start with 280 and then 320 and 400. I'm going to be turning it in reverse just to keep the dust going away from me. That's working very nicely. I'll do a little bit more there and then I'll go to 320 and 400 and that'll finish this. I decided to take advantage of the fact that it's sitting there in the Jacobs chuck and after sanding it 
I use just a little bit of this Ultra Shine, which is a very fine abrasive and polish. Now I'm going to finish it off with just a couple drops of Shellow Wax. This is a friction polish, so I'll use the speed of the lathe to finish this off. Turning it at 3000 RPM. And I can see the polish building as the heat works on it. And that's very nice. Got a nice shine to it. Now I'm going to do the other one. I have glued it into the end of the dowel. So I'll put that through the pin jaws and I'll do the same thing on here. Well, I hope that gives you some idea on how to go about making one of these wooden hinges, whether you have a CNC router or not. Now I ended up not gluing both of these in. I'm not really sure exactly what I want to use it for, so until I do know that, I can't make the hinge the specific size. So if you made it to this point in the video, thank you for sticking around. I'm sure a lot of wood turners and other woodworkers, as soon as they heard the term CNC router, went, oh my God, I'm out of here. But that's all right. Thank you for sticking around. Now go have a great day in your shop and be safe. Don't forget to subscribe. Hope to see you next time. Thanks for coming around.